opening statement and then we'll open for questions. Well, uh, I am uh, tremendously proud of our football program, of the Jackrabbits. Um, but uh, however you measure it, uh, the degree a bit higher than that, I'm disappointed. Um, you know, two teams play, one finishes first, the other one finishes last. And uh, I am, and then in addition, I am tremendously proud of their attitude that they don't uh, settle for playing close moral victories, I think was the question. That, uh, you know, they, they, they come wherever they go, wherever they, they, they go and try to win the football game. Uh, very proud of them. Very proud of them. Obviously, tremendous effort by the defense that uh, gave you opportunities time and again, it seemed like in the second half, to, to, uh, to draw closer, and the offense was unable to capitalize on those. It had to be frustrating to, to see the offense sort of fizzle when you had opportunities. Well, the, there's a lot of stuff in that statement. I am The, the defense did a great job. Uh, a great job, and, and I would credit uh, the guys on the field, but I'd really credit our defensive coaches too, uh, with the game plan. And uh, uh, I mean, guys, that's a tough offense to defend. I mean, go back in the last three games and look at the stats, and uh, for them to pull their starting quarterback out of whatever frustration, I think uh, is a positive for our guys. Uh, disappointment for our offense, uh, somewhat. Uh, their speed is great. And so when, when one play might be eight yards, it's going to be four against these guys. We didn't have a lot of opportunities for big plays. Tyro made a big catch. Uh, Colin made a big catch. But we, we knew if we were going to win this football game, it wasn't going to be 44 to 43. You know, it was going to be play your tails off. And I think that's what we did. And uh, we had an opportunity early and felt we had scored. And, and we didn't. And, uh, Did you get an explanation of that play, John? Um, yeah, they said uh, that Tyrell, when he motioned, uh, he didn't he didn't move forward on the snap. He moved forward as he motioned, okay. and so he was attacking line of scrimmage. Had he stopped, it would have been a shift. But he, he was still in motion. They claim. I, I tell you what, these these officials were phenomenal in terms of dealing with and, and uh, explaining stuff uh, first class. What so, about the uh, penalty on the? Domino interception returns. That uh, Andy Mink, uh, I thought he stumbled, and uh, and then their D, one of their D tackle. I mean, I watched it, and their D tackle tripped over. It was on the replay. Uh, I don't even think he would. I don't know if he was trying to block because the play was behind him. I don't even know if it was interception. The the biggest disappointment of that is that kid that got the penalty. He had never caught Derek Dom. So yeah. had he had Andy tried to block him or not, he had never made the play. But that's football. And I'm sure if I look at their film and look at it from their standpoint, there's some plays that that uh, they think should have been different. Or whatever. John, did you offensively? Did you see Nebraska a little bit vulnerable to the run with all their their hybrid players that they play that the, kind of the back six with? Uh, vulnerable. Well, to did you the think run? you could run right at them? I mean, was that the? Um, we we felt uh, like when we went one back, they play with one linebacker most right. of the time. They didn't play that, and uh, and so. Uh, you know, I don't know their scheme exactly, but there's two gaps for that one linebacker. Right. But when you play your two big guys uh, head up, you, they may be pl plus those guys. I don't know. Okay. Uh, we got a couple good runs off of that. Kyle had a real good run one time. Uh, but other than that, I mean, you, you got to you got to knock them off the ball and make that linebacker make a choice and then cut it back. So uh, I, I, th I thought one thing about that. I thought our guys again, our offense maybe didn't score uh, enough points, but I thought our offense forced three or four timeouts on their part. And those guys were, I don't know, dis confused. I don't know what it was. But uh, again, uh, it's, it's a good it's a good, uh, it's a good defense. It really is. Coach, yeah, can, you talk, can you talk about the changes in the offensive line? Yeah, because they play the, the heavy techniques on the guards. We moved our center to guard to, you know, instead of chipping and working to a linebacker that runs twice as fast as he does and it's hard to get to. We said, uh, Ryan McNay, you're going to play guard. Will Castle started at center, first time he started. And that was a great move on our offensive uh, coordinator's part, Luke Meadows. Um, that, you know, that's what we get paid to do, but that was, that was very smart. Did that play into your decision to, on the fourth and one play, go with the option, fourth and goal in the first drive, as opposed to maybe just pounding it straight up the middle? Well, um, I didn't know what the call was. Um, 
so I don't, I don't, I can't say. I mean, that's that's Luke's call. They talk about it. Uh, we felt they would uh, when when uh, uh, Thomas emptied out. We thought they would they would lose a guy. They really defended it pretty well. They they defend a lot of things pretty well. Thomas so. uh, struggles and throws and key situations. Can you just address your quarterback situation? Is he your starting quarterback moving yeah. forward? Yeah, he's our starting quarterback. He needed to. We told we we talked to him all week about making decisions quick, and the weak throws he made really were uh, indecision, and you can't do that. And then you have people bearing down on you, and you're throwing. He had Colin wide open on the one pass through at his feet, and that was a read, but, his, but, but that's what we told him what happened, but his first read was open also. So he hesitated, and he thought, well, I'll go with what the coaches told me. And I, I may, you know, when we talk about that, we may be overcoached that, to be honest with you. Coach Flynn is like to know that you kind of had somewhere between 3,000 and 10,000 Jackrabbit fans here rooting you and uh, behind your back for you this whole game. Uh, it, was, it was a treat. It was a treat. We were honored by the fans and their excitement. Uh, they don't want to hear this, but, uh, you know, it's not a victory. You know, and there were so many positive comments out there, and they should be. But uh, our guys, uh, you know, they hurt also. So the, 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 the pride they have for playing their tails off, there's also a, a hurt there that what would have could have uh, type of deal. You know the fans don't have that feeling. The fans don't, you know there's two populations. There's the people in the stands and the people in the locker room, and and I deal with the people in the locker room. That's all I want to deal with. But but my 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 high five uh, those people. They made some noise. It was it was good. John, there were so many predictions that this was going to be a big blowout. Did you fear embarrassment at all coming down here? No. No, I didn't. And in fact, we didn't. Interesting uh, question. You know, I heard we heard a radio station said if you don't, we don't beat them by 100 points, uh, it would consider it a loss. Um, uh, you know, there was a score 63 to seven as we drove in here. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't talk about that once. We didn't say one thing about that. And uh, you heard it though. We we heard it. Our players heard it, but we didn't. We didn't put that stuff on, up on the board. Okay. And uh, and I, I'm not. I'm not judging. The, Nebraska's program because Nebraska didn't say that stuff. Right, that's football. Yeah, media, I mean, everyone right. I saw. That's you guys. Just, just, just the. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but you, in answer to your question, uh, we're in control of one thing, and that's how we play the game of football. Right. The media does their deal, and, and we, we, we need you to tell the story, and we honor that, and uh, it's our job to play the game. And I think that motivated us a little bit, but I think when the first ball snapped, you're not thinking about some, sure. some radio guys saying it. You're saying, just like those guys said, I can't say any better than those guys said. So. Coach Stig, are we closer to seeing Jack around football the way it's supposed to be than we were the first two weeks of the season? Yeah. Are you pleased with the performance? That was uh, Jack Rabbit football. Yeah, that was Jack Rabbit football. In a close game, it's crucial. We need to score at the start, and then we need to score another couple times, and, and uh, we had our opportunities. Could you touch on uh, Basham's situation? I know he played He's well. injured, and they need the x-rays and need to, need to uh, uh, search it out. D tremendously dis disappointed for a senior nose guard to be in that situation, and, and uh, but but again, Andy Mink rises up and plays his tail off. Uh, Brian Fisher. Uh, that's the beauty of our program. How about Will Castle stepping up in the center position somewhere he hasn't played all year? I don't know if he smiled. He smiled since he's been at South Dakota State, but I got to believe there were a couple times when we had some plays that Will had a little bit of a grin. And uh, but again, I would I would credit Coach Meadows with those great decisions and teaching and having a game plan that you can move guys around and, and we had Q. How would you sum up your game plan for approaching this Nebraska offense? Because it seems like this is the best job a team's done of bottling it up Martinez. So I thought the game plan was excellent. You know, the first time we ran the ball, our free safety came up and smacked him and he fumbled the ball. Uh, many times we had two guys on him. That was the game plan. And, and they reacted to that in the second half by handing off the, the outside zone, that lateral play they ran. But, you know, that's, that's he's got the ball. Let's try to run him down. If they make blocks, it's hard. If they don't, then we, we had a chance. So we wanted to take him out of the game, and consequently, their coaching staff took him out of the game. Did you feel like you made their run game go more side to side than they would want it? You know, it um, like they couldn't really go north to south. Right, the game. right. Uh, they got some plays in, this, in the, the fourth quarter they, where they washed us and the, they cut back. Um, I, I don't know if you dictate if you run a lateral. You just say your quarterbacks not run the football, and so they, they they hand the ball off on that read play. So. How does how does playing in an environment like this and against a team of that quality how does this help your team this season? Um, 
Well, I think I think they're reminded that uh, you know you see that for about the first ten seconds of the game, and then it really doesn't matter. I mean, the, the no noise was it seemed like it might have been a factor a little bit, and I'm not taking anything away from that great environment, but I think our guys were locked in and they played their 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 game and they did a lot of positives. So I think what we're going to take from is when we go to the next intense environment, we're going to say, you know what, it's not going to affect the football game. That's good. That's what we'll take out of that. Any more questions for Coach? Thanks. Thanks, Coach.